I'm going to be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know Monk. he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I, know, I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horse. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast. I've actually lost count of how many episodes it's been. I've got a feeling it's 13. I'm not 100% sure. So it could be 13, it could be 14. I'm not, not quite sure. Tom Julian to my right in his school uniform shirt. This is a very, uh, very high quality of thread count. It does look quite good quality shirt, actually. Yeah. And Dan Bardell as well next to him, dressed like a scruff, quite as usual, but no cap, no backwards cap, no. so no stick for that today. Uh, yeah, this is the Villa View. Obviously, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about Villa and other things. Hopefully, we might cheer you up a little bit because, let's be honest, there's not much to be cheerful about at the moment. Tom? start with the red, Reading game. Is that a good place to start? Well, I mean, it's been seven days, hasn't it, since we since we were last on uh, on the mic, as it were. And That's Craig Davis. <laughs> you know, um, I don't think I've got enough street cred for Craig Davis. Have I? Really have not. Um, so we, we obviously lost to Cardiff in, in quite an abysmal um, affair there. Uh, there wasn't, wasn't too many highlights to talk about there particularly. And then, obviously, the Reading game, I went down last night. And, and really, from... <laughs> From trying to get a train to trying to get home, it was a bit of a disaster, to be honest. I mean, as soon as you mention having to get a train, that is your Achilles heel, so that's a bad start yeah. to it. That's a, a bad start to any day. We should have known at that point that it probably wasn't going to go great for Villa. Do you know what? Good. Yeah, that, that seems unfair, because I was actually there early, um, picking up some tickets, and, and, and that was its own problem. But Robbo, who I was watching the game with, he um, he was half an hour late for the actual game. He, he left where we are right now. Which is what, about twenty miles or so from from Reading, twenty five. Yeah, like that. That. Um, he left at five. Didn't get to the to the, to the Majeski via public transport uh, for three and a half hours. That's uh, Southwest trains fault that one. That's, that's, a, that's a long old stint. It was, but actually, to the game. Once you get into the stadium, uh, it didn't get much better for Villa. You know, I felt like we just gave Reading so much time. To play, you know, they they picked the ball up in in midfield, or they brought it out from defence, and they had the opportunities to kind of look forward. Even at the edge of our box, we were kind of standing off a little bit, and and they had time to pick a pass, whereas we should have been kind of at them all the time. And when when we did finally get our goal in the eighty seventh minute or, or whatever it was, you know, then we started to press them more, and they looked really nervous at that point. And you just feel we've got the players that are good enough to be pressing and then to create chances ourselves. We just haven't seen it yet. As someone who wasn't at the game, I was busy winning the annual Sky Football Tournament, so I've not I haven't actually seen the goals, which is pretty poor. How did I not know that you were, you were going to mention that you'd won another trophy? Then? Well, natural born winner could do with a few more damn Bardells. Yeah, that's true. Aston Villa. What would you say was the biggest fault with Villa last night? Creativity going forward really was. <laughs> I think more than creativity, actually, just a lack of a plan, attacking-wise. You know, we lost Scott Hogan after 28 minutes. Yeah. And I know lots of Villa fans aren't particularly happy with Hogan. We spent a lot of money on him. Surprises me, that does. Well, it doesn't... You know, you, you and I have talked about how he was at Brentford, and, you know, he scored 13 goals in 20 games, or something like that. He, he can be creative. We haven't played to his strengths. And I think if you're just looking at Villa, he really hasn't delivered on, on what you'd hope. No. But... We're not playing to his his strengths, and then when he bring uh, when when he gets injured, you know you bring on Gabby, and there's no semblance of plan there. You know we're we're hitting the ball long. Gabby's not winning them. Actually, he can't. It's not his fault, is it? Yeah, exactly, totally. Uh, but then even when we're getting kind of Andre Green looked kind of bright last night, but he was he was the only one where they're they're just not on the same wavelength. You know. Andre Green picks up the ball, then he's looking for the next run, it's just not quite there. There was a point where we picked up the ball in the middle of the park in the first half, and there was this huge gap of space, and Birkett Bjarnason's just kind of waiting there, where actually we should be attacking the holes. And again, Bjarnason just didn't look like a right winger at all. His first that touch, way he was playing wrong, yeah. yeah. His first touch let him down a couple of times, and you know, that just it just stifles the attack. So I think we, we really need to find a system that, that's going to be effective, whoever we have playing that front role. But this has only just occurred to me, I've only just thought of this point now as you've been talking. Do you think with Villa at the moment, there's too many players on the periphery of the game? They're not quite, they're not quite there. Yeah. They 
feel like they could be dangerous, but they're just on the periphery of it. They never quite get back. They never get into the game enough. Yeah, I think a few people have talked about the um, just the, the kind of teamwork and the, the the playing together style. You know, we have a few players who can influence games, but they can't do it on their own. And like you say, when they're playing on their own, it's just a, a peripheral view of, what, of what's going on. There were too many changes last night. I was a bit surprised when I saw the team. I thought the wholesale changes were quite surprising. I know you've got to utilise your squad. We play Saturday, Tuesday, play Saturday. Again, I was surprised at the, the number of changes and a few of them, to be honest, didn't really make sense to me. Uh, I think I think it comes down to Villa still not knowing quite what their best team is. You know, you've got injuries that are piling up as well. You're, you're still missing key players like Yedinak and Kodja. Grealish. Um, Grealish, of course. And... I think the changes are, are, are Steve Bruce still kind of tinkering and still trying to work out exactly what, what he wants to do with this team. Um, the midfield got, got overrun like it, it, like it did against Cardiff on Saturday. You know, you had, uh, and and Hurahan and, and Whelan just looked a little bit out of sorts again. So if, you, if you're losing the midfield battle there, you're really going to struggle to impose yourselves on the game. I think. I don't think we found the right balance in central midfield. As yet, the midfield thing always worries me because when we had, for example, Westwood playing there, everyone thought, and I liked Westwood personally, I thought he was a good player, but when he went, everyone was like, oh, we signed a couple of new midfielders, everyone's like, oh, midfield's going to be solved now. But to me, it's no different, it's no better than it was when Westwood was there, having Lansbury and Horan, I know Horan scored last night, it was no better than when we had Westwood and Yedinak or Westwood Gardner and Yedinak, Bakuna in there. Whoever plays in the midfield, that that still seems to be the problem to me. Definitely, we we didn't control the midfield. You know, we've got this we've got this defence that we that we're building on. You know, and Bruce maybe wants to play some counter attacking football, but we still need to control the midfield, of, uh, the, the central midfield. And you're right, I don't think we've got um, we found the right balance there where where it just works. You know, I, one one thing I want to say about Hurahan, like he again works hard, but. Something that annoys me, he takes free kicks on the left-hand side. Yeah, I saw your article. Yeah, right. Uh, I read it this week. Oh, thank you very much. I skimmed it. Thanks. I skimmed it. That, that'll do. That, it's, it's progress. It's an improvement, yeah. You know, and you've got... I, I was quite confused by that annoyance, to be honest. Well, so you've got a left-footed player yeah. kicking the ball from the left-hand side, so it's curling outwards, and it's kind of floated in. When you've got some attacking prowess like John Terry and James Chester, what you want to do, be doing is kind of rifling it towards the back yeah, of the goal what and, and the centre backs then hit the ball head on and you know you're just then you just need a touch or a deflection and that's going to score a lot of goals. Is he taking it from the right as well? Uh, do you know what that didn't annoy me as much? No, but we, we yeah, but that's what you want isn't yeah. it? You want a left foot I don't, I, Do you know what I don't think we had those chances I can't I can't recall a chance where there was a ball whipped in and we really attacked you know the, well, we only had one corner or not you know, one corner we only had three shots on target it was a very disappointing Hurahan free kick right at the end where I mean it was very close to the edge of the box so to get it up and over is, is a when, tough ask when he's playing for Barnsley they're going in yeah but, and that's but, another thing isn't it you know you, you look at these players Hurahan and, and Hogan who have who You've seen you've seen them do it in other places, and that's I think that's where the frustration really comes in because you have this hope, you have this excitement, and it's just not happening. I mean, that's, the first, that's the first time you've seen Villa live this season. Oh, this season. As a game, wasn't yeah. that was the first time. Yeah. If you did, you see the whole game on the telly. Yeah. We're even said to be a million miles from that. Yeah. At the moment, that's worrying. Yeah. So we we were talking last night about the especially the first half of the whole game and. And even at the end of the whole game as well, where we started to, to kind of push and Andre Green had that chance. And it just, the, the confidence seems to have seeped out. And I don't know whether it's just, uh, just but is it still this away form? I just don't understand how things can change so much from being at home to being away. I guess we'll really see yeah, Saturday. on Saturday against Norwich. Another tough, tough task. Well, they're playing tonight. So they've got the, not the best start. They lost to Sunderland at home, three yeah. one, which was unexpected. Yeah. To say this, because I, mean, I look at that Sunderland side, it's not very good. It's not a good team. I will but say they've obviously done something wrong because they've gone to Carrow Road and won three one. Absolutely, and I, I mean I felt like that about Hull. I don't think they're the best side. You obviously have a little bit of a higher opinion of them than me because I, I think they'll be up there. And I think to be honest, I think Cardiff will be up there and Reading as well. Cardiff. Definitely looks sharp. You know, that Zahor who yeah, was been linked with Hull today actually was very influential. And if I was uh, if I was in charge at Cardiff, I wouldn't let him go because I've seen a couple of his his goals and he looks really sharp. I think he was their top goal scorer last year as well. Um, but I would put Hull and Reading in the same kind of bracket. It wasn't like Hull out 
outclassed us in player quality, but they did as a team. And you know, yeah. you, you look at someone like Yap Stam, who is a very organised manager, has obviously played under some great managers as well. And you just want to see that kind of that organisation in the Villa side, and that really seems to be the difference. Well, to be honest, he's played under the same manager that Steve Bruce has played under. That's a very good point. That's a, I've, again, I've only just thought of that now. When, yeah, when you very said good it. point. Yeah. We were organised, and for some reason, the last few weeks or the last week, we're suddenly very unorganised at the back. I mean, I think. I don't know what was Chester like last night and he had a bad game against Cardiff and he'll never have as bad a game as that again that's just in, in his defence yep. that's the first bad game he's had in a year yeah. uh, I, I, he was back so I've seen him and Terry have escaped, escaped criticism last night from what I've seen whereas against Cardiff they had a bit of criticism yeah I mean the goals were the, the, the first goal was very unlucky to be honest it, it kind of came down to right action came down the right hand side yeah and it deflected off Glenn Whelan you know Sam Johnson did his best there to, to try and hook it out but uh, such as our luck that goal, te- goal line technology is now a factor, and obviously it was a right goal, so so fair enough. But that wasn't their fault. I would say the the second goal kind of came from a set piece, and our marking was terrible. You know, we we drifted off, and and their players are, are freely available at this point. So, you know, you, you, that's not necessarily Terry or Chester's fault. And I think by and large they won all their headers. They kind of marshaled the defence, and that's what they're there to do. You know, Neil Taylor played. Okay, he didn't play great against Cardiff, and, and again, that's it. One bad game for Lee. He's been he's been almost flawless. There was a couple of times where he he was um, he had the um, and Mo Barrow beat him a couple of times down that, down their right hand side. But you know, I mean, that, that's football. Yeah, sometimes you get beaten, and we didn't necessarily get punished on those kind of attacks. I thought Richie Delat looked okay, coming kind of coming back. Big ask. Exactly. That's why he got taken off. That's why Hutton got brought on. But I mean, it just. It's a bit disappointing, I think, as a Villa fan, where you look at 66 minutes or whatever and you've taken off your right back for another right back. And it just it didn't feel like the right move, especially in the atmosphere. Villa fans were great, obviously, singing loud, but you've got to give them something to hold on to. And switching right backs isn't inspiring. I mean, I get that change in, to the extent that Dillard has not played 90 minutes for a year. So he was never going to last 90 minutes, which is why, to me, it seems a strange one to throw him in for. A way at Reading, you know, is going to be a tough game, especially when... This is one thing that's confused me quite a lot. Delat's not been on the bench in the league. Yeah. James Bree's been on the bench. So why now, when he's decided to take Hutton out, was Bree not in there? Uh, yeah, I, I was going to raise the same thing. I think Matt said it on the uh, said it on the video that he wanted to see more of Bree, um, and it just seems yeah, it seems seemed, seemed like a strange. One. Anyway, he Delat played okay. I'm he, pleased he's back. I think he'll make a difference actually. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to see him like Alan Hutton because he. Other than Cardiff, arguably, since February has been our best player, and I was someone who gave him a very hard time. So I can sit here in a humble pie and say, since February he's been very good. Okay, he had a bad game against Cardiff, but I don't think he's going to be here next season. So Delambre makes sense for me. The one, another thing that has annoyed me, so I don't see the need of why we had Bree and Hutton on the bench. Yeah, I've seen when that. the night before, in the under twenty threes. O'Hare, Keane and Davies, Hepburn, Murphy, three attacking players have played in that game for the under twenty three against West Brom. Surely we could have done with one of them on the bench. Yeah, you you would think. There was a there was a, a definite lack of what do we do now, especially when Hogan went off so early, you know, and you've you've got Gabby up there and he looks a little bit lost. Uh Onoma looked uh, very out of sorts last night. You know, he's had he's had two or three good games and yeah. it's it's a lot to ask for yeah. for a twenty year twenty year old player to play three games and have an impact in every game. I thought uh it was just a, too much uh, he'd bitten off too much that he, that he could chew last night and you're right if we've got those young players they're the kind of people that we can ro- rotate into the squad give them 25-30 minutes and really run at that Reading defence especially when they're tired and on the ropes at, at 2-1 you know it was only five minutes right at the end but that's where we should be you know really attacking them and, and looking creative you know, the annoying thing is in all my years as a Villa fan if we, we, if we were winning the game 2-1 and the other team was attacking they nabbed that late goal, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah, I mean, we, the other way around, it just doesn't happen. It was the free kick. The free kick was the best chance, and, and that went straight into the wall, which was obviously very disappointing. Um, obviously, Andre Green again had a chance. I don't know, you probably haven't seen it yet. But I've heard about it. Yeah, he had a chance in the first half where he was clean through. And if he scored already that this season, then that goal is going in. You know, he's, he's there, he takes the ball nicely, but it just kind of rolls it to Vita Manone in the end. Um, if he has the confidence that he's already scored in this league, you know, then he's the goal, then he's uh, then he's finishing that, and you know it's a different game. Then we go one 0 up, 
as I say, Reading aren't great shakes. They're, they're a decent side, but they, they were third last year. Were they third? Fourth? They, uh, third, I think. They, they obviously were in the playoff final and um, and very close, but they haven't strengthened as much. I think Stam's talked about the frustrations that he's felt in the transfer window. And nobody's, like, if you look at the bookmakers, nobody's really expecting uh, too much of Reading, actually. I had him in my top six. Did you? Prediction. Well, Dan Bardell's uh, obviously expecting well, big no, football voice. I will say uh, Paul Tipton got on onto me on Twitter and he was like is there, is there any reasons to be cheerful I came up with three did you yeah um, only three games gone out yep. of a 46 game season yeah we've got time there, there's no need to Newcastle do. didn't have to a good start last year I think uh, Robbo was saying last night that there was a You're desperate to mention Robbo in this podcast uh, yeah. <laughs> he had a good point hello Tom uh, I think, I don't think he's listening no he, he will. does listen he will um, Sunderland went a whole month or so. Yes, I was, I was going to say. Oh, there you well go. So it was a good point. Yeah. Well done, Robbo. Uh, went a whole month and still got promoted. So, so I hope it's not all lost. It's just not yet. lost. Um, well, well, you had the two reasons. Uh, well, Sam Johnston. Simpler one, your second reason. No, no, Sam. No, <laughs> Sam Johnston played well again. Made a couple of really good saves, good yeah. reactive saves, and um, I think he's growing in confidence yeah. every week. Happy to do the old humble pie. Yeah, for that one because I think he's been our best player so far this season. And, uh, England. and my final point was. We've still got players to return, you know, really important players. Uh, Yedinak and Kodja is still maybe a little bit of way off, and we knew, we we can't rely on them. We can't wait until no. Kodja's fit. Obviously, Jack Grealish won't be back until uh, probably the new year, uh, looking kind of December, new year time. Never stay. You know, that's a, that's a real blow. But there are these players to come back, and if we can get them back into the fold and still be in the mix at some point, then, then we're going to be massively boosted by that. No, my devastation there sounded very sarcastic. I was actually being genuine. I'm a very big advocate of also, Jack Grealish. If you don't know this by now, Get Dan, soon, Jack. Dan's quite a sarcastic person. Yeah. So, uh, no, we'll have kicked upon that song. No, there you go. I've got another reason to be cheerful. This is one I can all, you can always hang your hat on this, this reason that I'm going to come, that I'm going to come with now. Okay. The pitch looks nice. The pitch always looks nice at Villa Park. There's no doubt about There's that. Always a reason to be cheerful. Unless you've done a knee slide. Yeah, right? don't do knee slides. <laughs> the pitch in front of the grounds because they do not like it. There's obviously a lot of talk about unrest and uncertainty, and there were boos at the end of the game last. I was going to ask you about the away fans. Actually, did they usually when the away fans turn on the manager, then you know you're on the cusp. Did they fully turn last night? Would you describe it as a full turn last night? All the away fans against the manager. It wasn't good. I mean. It, it, it's never the whole. It wasn't the whole uh, away end. You know, there were there were people clapping the team off the pitch. Oh really? Yeah. Did the players come up at the end, clap, and some of some of them get told to do one? No, no. Most most of them. Oh, most, it didn't happen. Most That's of them, a good sign. Can I, can I finish? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> most of them um, came up to clap. There was a couple of who went straight down the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of players who were obviously given the signs and whatnot to not to do one. not to see them anymore. Yeah. Um, who? Uh, Gabby Bonahor didn't didn't come up to the um, didn't come up to the away end. Okay. Um, there weren't. I think it was, I think it was frustration, and the away fans, like you've said before, they were great to start with, and uh, and they were in great voice, and it was really really good. When the football got really bad, and you know, sixty minutes and you're two 0 down, the boos rang out, and there were there were boos at the end of the game. They were yeah. they were very very vocal about that, and. It's a tough position for frustration. Well, yeah, of course, and I don't know if there's anybody more frustrated than Bruce probably at this point. Oh, he will be. He's not. He, he loves football, doesn't he? And he, he yeah. wants to do a good job. He has not say it's not like he wants to fail. Totally. He's a very successful championship manager as well, and, you know, he... It looks like he's just kind of scratching his head at this point, trying to work out his best option, and it's just not coming up for him. It's the fine margins. If we won the first game, 1-0 against Hull, which what feasibly could have happened, or... T- or two one, then I don't think the, I don't think the Cardi thing happens. Think things work differently. There's a bit of confidence. We'll have then gone on and won the League Cup game. So you've won your first two games. It's a different game. Just confidence is such a big thing in football. And getting tongue three 0 by Cardiff has surprised us all. We surprised me. I thought we might get beat. But I didn't think we get beat three 0 That's unacceptable. Yep. Phil and Toby and Taylor, people like that have all said said the same. It's, it's not acceptable. But then from that moment, confidence just becomes a, a major factor. And then. You get an unlucky goal against you. Oh, whether we're playing well or not, it sounds like the first goal for Reading was very, very unlucky. Definitely. You find yourself one down. We don't seem to get those breaks. We never seem to get the breaks. And, and that's under numerous managers as well. Doesn't it seem, though, you people? some some people say you create your own luck and all this kind of stuff, but confidence is such a massive factor. You're right. It's a killer. And, 
you know, if we're playing confidently, Andre Green takes that first opportunity against Reading, we go 1-0 up, and the, the game is a completely different story then. You know, we, we get on them, their crowd, Reading's crowd wasn't very big, there was a lot of empty seats there, and you know, the Villa away and, and takes over, and, and the whole game changes on its head. Now, you go to Norwich, and you need a performance. You I know, think we'll get it. Yeah. I'm sorry, but if it's a bit ready, so I probably don't listen. I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But we have to win for many reasons. And Steve Bruce has to win. The players have to win for themselves. Like we need to win. If we've gone the first four games without picking up uh, a single victory, then obviously questions are going to be asked. Obviously questions are being asked. Now, rightly or wrongly, but it's a must-win game. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think so early on in the, ste- in the season, sorry, where... You've got unrest and, and some fans are obviously unhappy with Bruce. That that happens. And you, you start to look at the kind of managers that, that could be available if that were to happen, if the club made that decision, you know. And you, you have a choice, don't you, where you go down the old kind of tried and tested route of, of managers that you know what they're about, they're not particularly inspiring, or you go for somebody kind of completely different, you know. You've got people like, uh, I know he said he's retired, but Allardyce would... I, I, I don't think so. I, I think he would. Why would he have left a comfortable job at Crystal Palace, a good job, a good job as well in the Premier League, with the main man, Christian Benzeka, he's your striker. Yeah. Why would you leave that because you were sick of football and then come and take on the poison chalice? I think he'd be very surprised as to... Uh, the, I've completely forgotten the saying. You know, he's been out of football a long time. It's that long. It's about a few months. Exactly, but that's a long time in football. You get somebody who has lived and breathed football every day of his life, like yeah. Sam Allardyce. You know, he he took the Crystal he's Palace job. Anyway, I want he took the Crystal Palace job off the back of the England job. And I think he needed. I think he needed a break. I think if you approached him, it'd be a different story. Now. Oh, I bet you ten English pounds to the Stillian Petrov Foundation. The, if the worst happens at Steve Bruce. There's no way Allardyce will come. All right, I'll take I'll take that bet. I think there has to be some sort of odds though, because it's more likely not to happen than it is to happen. I'll make the bet then. All right, I'm taking it anyway. Uh, you've, but you've got other other names in. Let's talk. I think we just can't not talk about Bruce. Yeah. I don't know about you. I'm in the position at the moment where genuinely now I just don't know. I don't know what to do for the best. If I was the owner of the football club, I don't know what to do because I'd be tearing my hair out. Yeah, I know that, that seems to be the way of the club, doesn't it? Where and, and Bruce himself is just like. I don't know what to do. It's very frustrating to watch, I will say that. Yeah. You know, and, and people pay their money to go and watch and they're entitled to their opinion on these comments and and in the terraces, you know, you, you, you can say what you want. But I feel like I'm in the same boat as you, annoyingly. Like, I want to be... I want to be fully behind him. I think that that's, that's first of all. But I just... I don't know whether the change is going to come with Bruce or not. Has my faith dwindled? Yes. If I had a gun to my head at the moment, I'd probably, I'd probably still back him. Because it, just because I feel like it's so early. And that might not be a good reason, it might be a bad reason. It's three games in. I know you've got the carry on from last season where we didn't do what was expected, but I think there was reasons for that. And I think, and I do still think there's probably a lot going on behind the scenes of the club that we do not know about. I think there's a lot, a lot, there's a lot of stuff to mess to clear up still. You don't go down for the Premier League with 17 points the way we did and there not be a lot of doo to clean up. It just doesn't happen. No, true. But there, there, there has been a big clean-up. Or the, uh, the, yeah, there has. We're on the way to it. Yeah. yeah, we're in the midst of it. But I just, I genuinely don't know anymore. I just do not know. I don't know. That's like someone who's obviously talking, sitting here talking about Villa people tuning to listen, hopefully, interested in what I have to say. Yeah. I don't know yeah. anymore. I am bemused by everything. I think Norwich is going to be a huge, huge game because it's not a reason that, it's not a reason to keep him to say, oh, away form is always bad. You know, that's the manager's job to, to stop the rot there. But we've had two bad away games. If a Hard poor, away games? If a poor performance follows at home against Norwich, who haven't started the best either, that's the most frustrating thing you've got. Well, they might have got a win by the time this podcast goes That's on. true, but Reading, Reading had and they didn't look great shakes. You know, Norwich are definitely not all the way there. It's not like they've, they've won their first three and are, are, are bombing. You know, if if we can at least put the performance together, I think that's really, really important that we start to see players playing together, looking to play attacking football and uh, and some sort of yeah, unity when, when we're going forward. It's just to me at the moment, 
I say it's a collective thing. I can't believe that Bruce sends the players out to sit back and make bad passes. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. The players have to take some responsibility. It's a collective thing. Maybe Bruce isn't doing what he should be, but the players certainly aren't either. It's not just Bruce. Yeah. It's everyone. Totally. There's a, there's a psychology about it, definitely. I mean, we there's, there was often times last night where we'd pick the ball up and we'd we'd boot it away, you know, and not necessarily towards Gabby Bonlevore either. It'd be into some space where there's literally no one. And, and it's just get rid and and kind of re- reset. One question I did want to ask you, because we've, we're obviously going around trying to find reasons for this. It's been a reasonable debate, to be honest. Yeah. It's been a good, good chat so far. If I was tuning into this, I'd be more pleased. Is that, I think that's a backwards compliment. I think it's been a good I think it helps that you've been to the game. Oh, yeah. It does help. It's, yeah. a, it's a weird one for me to be on the other side of it, having not seen the game yeah. and talking to someone about it. It's weird, but that's good. Yeah, well, real fan, you know. <laughs> Pretend over there. Oh, part time. Um, you have Scott Hogan, who rolled his ankle last night. You know, we're not quite sure whether he's going to be fit for Saturday or not. That's basically the way things are going at the moment. He's not going to be fit, is he? Yeah, well, Bruce has already said that he doesn't think that Ross McCormack is the answer. You know, he's, done. he's going to bring in Russian Hepburn Murphy, Kenny Davis. You've got those young players that you've asked for. Now he'll, he'll play Gabby on Saturday. But he, he has, he's going to start Gabby, isn't he? You know, well, yeah. Well, who do you play alongside Gabby? What do you do to support Gabby? Because Gabby's not a one-man band up front. To me, a Bonhoeffer's goal record in recent years suggests that if you're going to play him, you have to play him next to someone. So I'd put Kenny Davis in personally because I think his hold of play would help us at this current time. When we're struggling to hold on to the ball, having a bit of a unit. Who show, showed showed good hold of play against Brighton, who ended up being promoted last season. They were scared to death of him. It made sense to throw him in. Yeah, you got Onoma as well, who again before last night looks looked at, looks a handy player. You know, we've got options. Mm-hmm. Was, the, the players there are good players. I look at some of the people we're losing to, and look at some of the stuff going around in the championship, and I think how how do we not win games? I don't know. I don't. And again, it's, it doesn't seem to matter who the manager is at Villa, who the players are, who's behind the scenes. We just seem to be cursed. I've seen it with a smile on my face. Obviously, I'm not happy about it, but I'm genuinely at the point of amusement now. Yeah. I don't know what to say or do. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a huge game on Saturday. I've said that. I've said that. Terrified time, already. Yeah. yeah. It, it kind of feels like that sitting here with you. We're just like on the point of laughter, but because we just don't know. It's a nervous that. laughter. Yeah. I'm scared. I mean, I'm, that's the really no point there being nervous about it because I can't control it. No. But if only I could pick up a FIFA game pad and well, I way out of trouble. Maybe they should play you. I mean, all you do is win. Well, yeah. I think there's a big difference between the Sky Five side tournament and uh, championship football. I'm going to put, put my neck on the line and, and say that. I don't know. I don't know, Thomas. I'm at the end of my tether. Disaster on the Villa View podcast. The camera battery has died. And as we're in the stupid Birmingham City archaic booth today, St Andrews as we call it, <laughs> there's, there's, no, booth. there's no power socket. So... We're left now to have to try and record the rest of the show for you watching on video on iPad. Audio, you won't be affected. So if you are listening to this in an audio manner, then you're okay. You can still leave five-star reviews on iTunes. If uh, if you are watching as well on YouTube, you know, it's a different angle. You get to see us. I feel like I come off in a bit of a better light. You do look better, and yeah. my, my grey hair is very prominent <laughs> on the iPad angle. Right. We've talked about... We've talked about the struggles so far, and, and you know, we've talked about a few... Uh, less happy things. I've got some. I've got some good news. Good news for one person. I've got some good news for a one Villa fan. Uh, uh, Villa View ran a competition. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that competition, Dan? Would absolutely love to, Thomas. Um, basically, we ran a competition to. So I'm trying to find out where the lens is on the camera <laughs> yeah. and I'm getting it all wrong. Um, basically, the Villa View ran a competition to, for our loyal subscriber base. All we had to do was be a subscriber and comment on our competition videos, and we gave you the chance. So we're neither a home, away, or goalkeeper Aston Villa replica shirt. You could have a name and number on the back of your chairs. If you wanted six Bardell, you could do that. If you wanted 26 Terry, five Chester, you could do that. 13 Julian. Oh, the cho- that the seems unfair. The choice was yours. So, yeah, we've actually managed to pick our uh, winner. I'm going to let Tom do the honours. Because, to be honest, he's performed well in tonight's podcast. I'm very proud of him. First one is performed well in. Wow. So let's have. You know, you just can't give a compliment, can you? No, I can't. Really <laughs> well, you've actually stitched me up here because um, we, we, we've picked a great comment, to be fair, but probably the toughest name 
uh, out there. One of the best. It's difficult one to say. I'm glad I'm not doing the honours. You know, uh, so I'm going to do the best I can. It's the comments from Sean, Sean O'Gaffin. Yeah, I think. Done. Yeah, I know. Let us know, Sean, if that is right. Yeah, but the, uh, hopefully Sean realises it's him that's won, because you could have said the name completely wrong, and the actual Sean is sitting there kicking himself, saying, oh, God, I put all this effort in. I think I've and I haven't won. Like we can get in touch with that. I think I'll follow him as well. So, Sean, um, I mean, you can never understand names from, from Ireland, the Emerald Isle. I think it's a generalisation. Well, they're, they're just spelt folly. Dodge it. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, great comment, anyway, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some of it here. Um, he starts off, not, not the strongest stuff. To be honest, I'm probably nowhere near the person who deserves a free shirt, but I thought, why not? Sure, it's all about taking part and supporting the channel. So, yes, it is. Humble from the start. Yes. Um, for the far... For, for the last few years, it's been very difficult for me to get to Villa Park. Since the 29th of December 2015, the day that I subscribed to the Villa View, they've been my gateway to the church. I subscribed right at the worst part of our beautiful club's demise, at the same time as my own hardship. So it was literally like the sky was falling and not a halt ender to be seen. We should have some sad music in the back, shouldn't we? Oh, you know, some, some violins. Face to face, we've barely got a camera. Yeah, 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 that's true. Biggest can't be choosers at this point. Then the baby-faced Matt Lynch came onto my computer screen. A man looked like who looked like he was a, a man on a mission to give the faithful a voice and a view. Not like a man off to school with a wispy moustache. <laughs> <laughs> He's still got that moustache as well, hasn't he? At the Villa View, with the main man, creator, entrepreneur and innovator from the promised land behind the camera. And Matt beaming... Uh, with with the energy and motivation to rival any sportscaster, I knew this space was going to be uh, the future online homestead for me to feel what other supporters felt in what inevitably be, would be the worst season ever. That's such a long sentence. It's, it's a long sentence. You criticised his grammar? No, 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 not at all. I, I felt closer to Villa than I ever had done in years. I want to thank you for that, lads. The Villa View let the fans of Villa Park have a voice that was not coming from the club's hierarchy or anywhere, to be honest. Or anywhere, that sounds a bit... Well, we didn't want to hear from the club's hierarchy <laughs> yeah. at that point. Uh, nearly two years on and a balanced, more professional production with one of Sky's brightest young protégés in Dan Bardell. That's right. <laughs> and now Big TJ, a.k.a. Richard Bacon. You say you like Richard Bacon, but you actually do look like Richard Bacon. I get a lot of Richard Bacon. Slash Will from the in-between us. <laughs> <laughs> look like Will. <laughs> Definitely don't. You have brought the heart of the Hulk back into my spirit. Dan Rowlinson, thank you, sir. Look forward to supporting the channel for many more years to come. Really, this is more of a thank you than anything. Cheers, lads. Well, Sean, you took to the heartstrings. Yeah. You have won that excellent prize. So get in touch with us. Probably don't get in touch with me because I've not got a good proven track record with prizes. Get in touch with Dan Rowlinson and he will sort you out. Let, let us know what size you are, whether you're a hench medium like me or an extra large like Tubby Thomas. Whoa. <laughs> Hashtag love handles. Update on that. On that. I'm slimming down. This, slimming down. This shirt's looking quite bigger. This so let us know. And if you do want a number on the back as well, let us know who you want. I don't really think that you would have mine or Tom's name on the back, but if you do want it, then you can. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Nice little segment. Nice to be able to do things like that. Great. Absolutely yeah. great. So, yeah, well done, Sean. Enjoy the shirt. And uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to everybody, actually, that left a comment. Um, good a lot of comments. We we appreciate them all. Um, yeah, where were you in the other videos, all these 500 comments? Who, me? No, not you. Just the, oh, we've, got right. more comments, we've got more comments for that video <laughs> than, uh, than we ever have. You know, you won't invite me onto other videos. That's where I was. Tom, you know, you, you know your place. You've got you to learn your trade. Uh, before we finish, I do have a little bit of housekeeping. Last week, we talked um, about my mum. Uh, she didn't come off in the best light, which is definitely my fault. So I just wanted to say, mum, if you've listened to this far, which you probably haven't, um, you're wonderful, and uh, I appreciate all the birthday and Christmas presents that we always celebrated uh, around this bright time of year. And uh, all, all 15 birthday presents out of 28. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a wonderful mother and role model, so thank you very much. Okay. Is that all right? It's fine. <laughs> Further uh, technical issues on the Villa View podcast, we can only apologise this week. It's been an absolute disaster. So, I'm about to record this last bit on my phone now for you those watching on video. So, sorry we haven't had any time to go through the questions because, quite frankly, we can't can't do it now with the technical issues that we found ourselves in. But we'll have a bumper questions and answers next week on the podcast. Hopefully, we did cover some of your questions in the general chat that we were having is in the end the podcast has turned into a bit of a, a Reading debrief hasn't it more than anything that's probably a good name to call it the Reading debrief yeah I mean that's that's a, that's a suitable 
a suitable place to, to leave it. So, really, really sorry. We've had a good run up until now. Could be the last time you see us. We might not be trusted. Dan Robinson might not let us do it again because we've shown ourselves up on a technical capacity. But thank you very, very much for sticking with the channel. And please do try and stick with the villa as well. I know it's very, very tough, especially for you younger fans who've seen nothing but misery. If you could like the video, can you even like the video? Yeah, you can. I'm confused. Yeah. If you could like the video if you've watched on YouTube, even though it's been a technical disgrace, fantastic. Please do that. Comment below on your thoughts on the Reading game and Villa in general at the moment and the podcast technical issues. Give us some stick because we deserve it. If you've been listening on iTunes, then leave a five-star review, please. Just don't bring technical things. Well, you shouldn't have noticed account. any of the technical things, so everything yeah, should be hunky-dory if you're listening on That's iTunes. That's true. We'll be back next week. We'll do a better job. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. I'm completely flustered by everything that's happened to us during this podcast. Thank you very much for all your support of the Villa. The Villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.